Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are on the air from Knight Stadium here in Kingwood, West Virginia for game three of the 2019 season. The Preston Knights taking on the Monarchs from John Marshall. Hi, I'm Steve Flake alongside uh, Terry Cochran here in the booth high above uh, the field here at Knight Stadium. And, Terry, it is a beautiful fall evening for football here on the mountaintop. Yes, it is, Steve. Nice temperature tonight, and it's going to chill off a little bit later on. We hope that fog doesn't roll in like it always does from off the river. But it's a beautiful evening. Don't say that. Don't say that. A beautiful evening here in Preston County as our Knights take on the Monarchs tonight. And, Steve, the Knights come in here one and one on the campaign. And after a... Really good start down at North Marion. They ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw with a very good North Marion team. Well, they but got off to a slow start at North Marion, and uh, it, it they were competitive, but they could not get it done. North Marion just had too much talent, too much experience. Tonight against John Marshall, they're looking to rebound. Uh, they want to be more than competitive. They want to be dominant here. Uh, they've got a team coming in here that's 0-2. Now, that can kind of go either way. Yeah, they um, play up in the Ohio region, so, you know, they play teams that uh, – bigger teams than what they normally play. But uh, Preston's going to – looks like they match up fairly well size-wise with them tonight from what I'm seeing on the sidelines. Yeah, uh, I think the, the difference is uh, for Preston, uh, the Knights are probably – uh, not used to seeing such a run-oriented team. And John Marshall will definitely uh, test the ground defense. They will try to uh, convince the Knights to cheat up into the uh, box a little. And if they do, experienced senior quarterback, uh, Fronaffle, he, uh, he can chuck that ball over us if we're not careful. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to watch that. All right, Knights start out in that uh, stacked eye with two wide receivers split wide and hand off to the second man through. That's number 24, Jesse Gribble, the workhorse for the Preston Knights. Yeah, you're going to hear his name an awful lot tonight. Terry uh, Gribble is uh, definitely a workhorse on offense and a stalwart on defense for the Knights and playing both ways. Um, you know, we just we want to get him uh, into the fourth quarter with enough gas left in the tank that he can make a difference. Well, Lewis just came out of the game. He's replaced by number uh, 84 for the Preston Knights, and that's uh, Riffle. Riffle splits to the near side as Thomas sets the and first give to the fullback, and he's stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. That was Bischoff on the run for the Knights. Flag down, and a holding call will go against Preston. Not good when the laundry hits the field, and definitely not good for Preston to put themselves back in a bit of a hole here, Terry. Uh, they've got to avoid mental mistakes. This John Marshall team, if they have a hope of uh, doing something early, uh, this just aids them in that regard. All right, three split to the near side of the field. Trevor's back in a shotgun. And another flag. Laundry back on the field once again. They call encroachment on the Monarchs, so they give the five yards right back to the Knights. See, that penalty got them excited, Terry. They tried to, they tried to get up there and uh, get going defensively and uh, get a stop behind the line of scrimmage and it cost them five. So it's now second down and about 11 for the Knights. Back is Thomas. Thomas looks, trying to find a wide receiver, sends him on downfield and he has to scamper out of bounds, chased out of bounds by the Monarchs on the far side. I believe number 88 for the Monarchs that time. As soon as I find our cheat sheet, and he's not on there. 
They've got some funny looking numbers uh, that don't quite line up with some of the bodies I was seeing out there in the warm up, Terry. Uh, I'm not sure if they're trying a little uh, trickery there uniform wise or if they just haven't updated uh, their SSAC site. All right, Thomas back. He catches, catches number 24 in the flat. Jesse Gribble, he gets hit hard, drove down by the Twins, 32 and 33 of the Monarchs. 33 is uh, Jace Boggs. He's a linebacker, 5'10", 180 pounds, a senior. So that's going to allow the Knights, and that's going to help the Knights. They're going to have to punt. Downfield, Monarchs get the ball, and they've got a return on. Number nine, shakes free, gets back to almost midfield, finally brought down on the play by 53. Fear to the Knights, saves a touchdown. So now the Knights on defense. We see that defensive line stacked with Stenson, along with number 85, Greg. And the give right up the middle and a nice head-on tackle. I mean, right there, that's what the Knights have to do to uh, stifle this John Marshall running attack. They have got to meet them head-on, and they've got to meet them with more than one body, Terry. It's got to be a group effort here this evening. That was uh, Aiden Bischoff from his linebacker position. They gained two on that, second and eight. Game to the second man once again. He sprints outside, and he's met by Bischoff once again. And number 20, Jackson Lewis for the Knights. That's a loss on the play. They're going to give him forward motion, actually a half, half yard gain. So about third and seven now for the Monarchs. Big third down here for the Preston defense. Try to get off the field, get the ball back on the go here on the march. Try to get some points on the board. Fornapple under center, and he fakes. He's going to look to throw. He's got a man downfield wide open, but the pass is just a little bit too high out of bounds over his head, and that's going to bring up fourth down. He was wide open, Steve, down in the flat. Yeah, and that little disconnect right there tells you why the Monarchs are such a run-heavy offense. They just have not been able to develop the, the, the necessary timing with the receivers, and particularly on some of these out routes, they're a little hesitant. That time they thought they had something there they could exploit, and it didn't happen. All right, back in uh, punt position. Almost a block on that play. A short punt of only about 20 yards. And the Knights will get the ball outside their own 30-yard line. So good field position for the Knights. Getting a little windy on the mountaintop now. There's a possibility of some rain here this evening, but slight. And I don't think it's going to uh, wind up taking place. I think uh, here this evening we're just going to have a nice, crisp, cool uh, fall evening for football. But for John Marshall, it's a little different, Terry. These guys don't know what real grass is. They <laughs> never play on it. Seriously, they don't play on it. They don't practice on it. Give to the first man through. Gribble. And he's stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Monarchs uh, have done their scouting. They know that Jesse Gribble is the workhorse for this Preston team. They're, uh, they're watching for him. Rosenberger into the game. Uh, Colton Rosenberger. And they're going to split two receivers to the near side as Brendan's out here along with uh, number 31. That's Townsend. 
put a man in motion, but they've got two guys in motion, and that's going to draw a flag. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the result of this play is, although John Marshall might say they want to they want to take the, the stop and the loss, but yeah. uh, the flag came out early there. I don't think the play actually happened. No. Yeah, it was an illegal shift. Had two guys in motion. That's going to bring up third down and over just about 11 yards. Preston just a little too anxious to get going there, Terry. Once again, they bring Brendan to the near side. Four wide receivers set. He's looking down deep. We've got a man down there. Oh, just could not get to the ball. A little bit strong as, as a streaking Rosenberger. Just could not get under that throw. Just overthrown. Looked like he had a, a good yard step on on the uh, defender, but just couldn't get underneath of it. A little more air by Trevor Thomas, and that would have been a good play. Kick out of bounce, and once again, we change field position, and looks like the battle of the field position is going to go to the Monarchs as they get the ball close to midfield once again. Yeah, with that uh, with that angled kick out of bounds over there on the Monarchs sideline, uh, that puts them in pretty good position here just over midfield with the ball in night territory to get started here at the 46-yard line. Fran Apple under center, he's, he's, they work out that stacked eye, but they're going to bring uh, a wide receiver to the near side. That's Burton. Oh, the quarterback almost falls down, but he gets the ball to the running back, and he gets outside, breaks containment, and will pick up a first down. Nice run that time by 33. Escorted out of bounds over across the way there by a host of Preston Knight defenders, but a nice pickup. Almost a broken play, but they turn it into a big game. Monarchs now inside Knight territory and another nice gain on first down. Pickup of about five yards on that play. Just a straight dive. John Marshall fans down in front of us here got their team right in front of them. Now they're excited. They want to see something on this end. Another first down run. Picked up that time by number 27. That's Alex Burton. They're keeping their tight ends in, and they're just playing smash mouth football right now. Give to the fullback, and he gains quick four yards, maybe five. Clock winding inside the six and a half minute mark here. First period, no score, but the Monarchs are threatening now. Back again to the halfback. He's stacked up, but after a, a gain of about three yards on that play. Burton, once again, running hard for the Monarchs. Third down and about four yards. Met by Rosenberger on the uh, stop there for Preston. Out to the right. And that brings up another big third down play here, although in the red zone, I think this is a fourth down team. And they're going to push that ball and try to move the stack here, see if they can get a first down. Monarch's got a couple big boys up front. That number 79, he's, he's a good 
size player for the Monarchs tonight. And he just moved that defensive line back. So they pick up a first down outside, about right about the 13 yard line. Here he goes again, off tackle. Preston stacks him up. That was Hunter Lance over there on the stop. Out of that eye, John Marshall, they like to run power. They like to run up the gut. They like to run to the short side of the field. Run right at the sticks. They know what they need, and they know how to go after it. Burton's been their workhorse so far. They like to uh, work the fullback straight up the middle, and then they'll they'll give him that little slant off tackle. Second down, eight yards to go. Give to the fullback. Fullback breaks through for another. Almost a first down. He's down inside the three-yard line. We'll see where the spot is. That's going to be real close on the distance to make the down. And they go quickly to pick up that first down, and they're inside the probably the one-yard line. So Preston backed up against their own end zone. With 4.27 remaining here in the first period. A nice sustained drive by the Monarchs as they've marched the ball right down on the Knights. I look for them to go right back to that fullback, Steve. Preston trying to load things up, but uh, to no avail, that's going into the end zone. And it's a touchdown for John Marshall. Once again, that's Alex Burton. He, he did a lot of the load all the way down the field for them. Picked up a lot of first downs. A nice run that time off, off the guard position. And just follows those big boys right into the end zone. That came at the 4.08 mark here in the first period. Kick is up and good. So the Monarchs take a 7-0 lead over the Preston Knights here in their first game at Preston High this year. I know and I think it's the first time John Marshall has made the trip into Kingwood uh, as well, Terry. So uh, a lot of firsts here this evening. And uh, the Monarchs first on the board. Now the Knights, they need to come out and answer. No more playing patty cake here. 4.08 to go in the first period. They don't need a big play, but they need a nice sustained drive. Use up the rest of this period. Get into the second period. Drive that ball and get it in the end zone. Get this game back on a, a, an even plane here. Well, back deep for the Knights is Colton Rosenberger. We know he has some speed, along with number 20. That's Jackson Lewis. Ethan Gray kicking off a short kick. And they didn't cover it to the last second. <laughs> they almost gave the ball right back to the Monarchs. They kind of were just kind of standing there watching the ball come down. Yeah, that's, that's not a like a ball. punt. <laughs> Nobody's going to down that. That's a live ball. He could almost, if he <laughs> another step, he'd have picked it up and went to the end zone with it. Okay, Trevor Thomas out in the huddle. He's uh, surrounded by Colton Rosenberger. They're going to have to try to do something to get Jesse Gribble, their feature back, untracked right now. Well, the tough thing for the Knights' run game in terms of going up against this John Marshall defense 
is that John Marshall practices against a pretty good run attack all week long. So they know what to expect when they come out here and they see a good back. Uh, doesn't matter uh, what Gribble may have in the way of talent. Um, they're, they're used to it. Okay, they split Brendan out to the near side. Got a man in motion, and that they give it to Rosenberger, and he's bottled up but breaks one tackle, and he'll gain about three yards on that play. A little jet sweep that time as they brought him across in motion and hand the ball off to him right in front of the quarterback. Nice finish by Rosenberger to make the most out of that play that he could uh, down here. Uh, goose stepping and, and hopping and uh, juking his way through a crowd uh, to get a couple extra yards there. <coughs> Trevor Thomas back. He's going to take it on his own. He gets hit hard, drilled out of bounds. Yeah, and that was. Uh, there comes the flag. That was right at the sideline and might have been one step over the side. I don't think uh, it was intended uh, to be a dirty play or anything like that, Terry. I think just good hard football. And uh, the defender didn't quite know where he was at on the field. Yeah, I think. Uh, being one step out of bounds. We're going to finally get a first down out of this. That'll be a 15 yard penalty against the Monarchs. Brings the ball out to the 40 yard line. That came at the 319 mark here in the first period. Preston down by a score of 7-0. And now a little breathing room. They've got that ball out to the 40-yard line. They're, they're moving a little bit here with the aid of the penalty. They've got a little space to work with behind them. And not right up against their own goal line anymore. All right, swing pass to Gribble. Gribble gets outside, breaks one tackle, but he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle over there. I and can't see exactly. Of, Looked like 30 on the stop. I believe that's correct. A lot of running for not much gain at all there. Zach Bischoff on that tackle for the Monarchs. Three receivers to the near side with one back set. Looking downfield, Trevor breaks out, and now he's going to look to throw. Continues upfield with it safely. Picks up about two yards on that place. Forced out of bounds by big number 60. Looks like big 68 over there. He's a monster. And I really don't, I think their numbers aren't uh, matching yeah, that, up. That was one of the big bodies we were looking at during uh, warm-ups down here on the sidelines. And uh, it doesn't match what they've got in the book for him. Uh -huh. uh, these I think that was Colby Cubic. We're going to call him number 69. He's 260 pounds. Pretty good sized boy. All right, we're back again. Thomas steps up in the pocket. Now he breaks containment. Now he's looking to throw deep. Ball downfield, intended for number 20, Jackson Lewis, in and out of his hands. And that'll bring up fourth down. So Knights forced to punt one more time here and give the Monarchs the ball back with two minutes remaining in this uh, period. Quarter number one here at Knights Stadium. A nice crowd on hand tonight. As you can see, the, the bleachers on the Knight Preston sidelines is pretty well full. Folks around town that don't get a chance to go to the road games uh, because of the schedule. Uh, first opportunity to get out here and uh, see the Knights in person and cheer for the boys. Good tackle over there by Richard Layton. Brings the ball carrier down on that punt. Uh, the Looks like the Monarchs will start first and 10 about the 34-yard line 
here with 2.12 remaining in the quarter. They stay in that uh, stacked eye, and they bring one receiver to the near side of the field. They're keeping their tight ends in, just pounding that ball. The Knights are going to have to make an adjustment. That was uh, number 27. He's been their workhorse all night, Alex Burton. That brings up second and short. Nice job that time against the fullback as they met him right at the line of scrimmage. Mason in the ball Number 75, Stenson on the tackle. Third and a short three yards here. Preston again with a good opportunity to get a stop. And I believe they've got him short of the mark. Good stop on that side of the field. Hunter Lance on the stop. Along with uh, Aiden Bischoff. Looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down, and they're in their this big gamble here in the first period. Quarterback sneak. I'm not. It's going to be close. That may have to. They're going to get. They have to bring the, the first sticks down. in. Uh, he's already waved it through. I don't know. I, yeah, they're moving the sticks. I think I would have demanded a measurement on that, Terry. That was extremely close. So first and ten for the Monarchs. All right, they look to throw. Got a man in the downfield. Nice pass. As they hit big number 16. That's Babsik. Yeah, the officials take a timeout, and that will stop the clock with uh, just 10 seconds remaining. Time Fraunhoff with made a nice uh, throw downfield, about 10 yards down. They're going to bring the sticks over to look at this. Got some excited fans. All right, this will be the final play of quarter number one. And the officials whistle them up to the line. Give to the fullback. And he gains about four yards on that carry. Brought down by a host of Knights. That was number 34, Austin Thacker. And that'll bring us to the end of one. So with that, we'll take a quick break here for these messages from the fine folks that bring you Preston Knight Varsity Football on your hometown TV station. And we'll be back with the start of quarter number two right after this. From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. 
They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project, and they're committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. The Transitional Care Program at Preston Memorial Hospital is an alternative for acute patients who need a little extra help before returning home. Services include physical, occupational, and speech therapy, patient and family education, personal care assistance, individualized care plans with daily activities, and 24-hour nursing care. Our team works to ensure a smooth return to independent living. For more information on the Transitional Care Program at Preston Memorial Hospital, visit us online or call 304-791-3733. Brown's Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Brown's Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Brown's Mill Grocery. Brown's Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Brown's Mill Grocery. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family. Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the new year with us by saving big on our double-sided made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. Come, Come experience the Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. We also have adjustable beds. One, hut two, hut three. Fuck! What do you think you're doing? I'm just trying to teach these ladies how to play football. You leave those girls alone and get back to work. But they want to play. Bye, bud. You better get in there and get my winter treads on and check my brakes and change the oil. We have to get to the Preston High football game, you fool. Rainbow Tire, the tire lady takes care of me. Back in Kingwood and ready to get quarter number two underway. We'll uh, trade ins here and the Knights will move from left to right on your screen. John Marshall right now working to get something going. And uh, Preston trying to get a stop. Nice job that time. They got some penetration. Uh, number 75 for the Knights. That was uh, Stenson. So it's third down. About six and a half yards to go for first down. He fakes. He's got a man rolling downfield. He hits the... The tight end down on the in the flat once again, and a nice pickup. That's the second time they've used that play. They drift him down right out into the flat, and he's wide open. That's uh, number 16, Babzik. First down, Monarchs. Give to the fullback. They go back to the power game. Now they're going to take what they can get out on the edge there, but I don't think they're real comfortable. And the Knights are getting decent pursuit uh, on those, but uh, the timing has gotten better between uh, John Marshall's thrown apple and his receivers. Trying to get to the edge. Number 27 for the Monarchs. Nice stop out there by the Knights. Rosenberger with that stop. Down. 
third and a middle distance five here. So Preston has, again, an opportunity to get a stop. Give up the middle, and they hold them this time. Thought they'd get that quick opener with the fullback. I don't believe they picked up the first down, but it's on, you know, they're they're within striking distance. Yeah, they consider it fourth down territory here, Terry. Yep, fourth down, about a yard and a half to go to a first down. We'll see what he does. Give to the fullback. He's stacked at the line. He's still driving his feet. And we're going to see where the spot is. I believe they're going to pick up that first down. They mark it down about the, uh, we're going to take an official timeout for a measurement. Yeah, that's uh, close to the 17-yard yeah, it's, line. It's close to the 17. They're going to have to bring the sticks in, get a measurement. Now that's what I asked them to do the last time. <laughs> I don't think they pay any attention to us up here. No, nah, they don't like making that long trek across the field. Night fans looking for some good news here. They want this to come up just short. We'll see. First down. Picked it up. Now the Monarchs keep the drive alive, Terry. 9.36 remaining here in this opening half. He's looking downfield, looking for that tight end when he's going to roll. Now he finds him. Flag comes down. He's always looking for Babizik. He just, he's a big boy, and he just runs over a couple nights towards the end zone. But there is a flag down on the play. I think that play's going to come back. The Monarchs, in their first two contests, Terry, only able to generate seven points of offense uh, on, on each outing. And uh, here tonight, it looks like they're trying to get things in sync and uh, get the offense rolling. They did. They have not made the mistakes that they made in the first two games uh, where penalties were a big factor. <coughs> well, that time a penalty ruined a pretty good play as that uh, was a personal foul for a, a – looked like a, a late hit on one of the nights or a clip. Okay, give to the – Half back, and he just blows up the middle, picks up a big chunk of that yardage, back to about the original line of scrimmage. Lance on the stop for the Knights. That's a big gain on first down. Brings up second and ten. They split two receivers to the near side. And they give once again to the halfback, and he scoots outside. He's got a, a running lane. And now flags are down right at the tackle. I think we got a face mask. Might get tacked on to the end of this. Personal foul, horse collar tackle. Personal foul is all against the Knights. Shifty runner, he uh, nearly trapped along the line of scrimmage, was able to uh, juke his way out of the grasp of uh, one night defender and made some headway there, and then Preston didn't do themselves any favors. But a little over-enthusiastic, and uh, you'll have that. 
Give to the fullback, and he walks it into the end zone for a touchdown. So that's going to put the Monarchs in pretty good shape here with 8.20 to go in the second period. Knights are going to have to find a way to generate some offense here before halftime, Steve, and get back yes, into this. Yes, indeed they are. Ethan Gray for the point after. Ball down, kick is up and away, and good. Extra point attempt, good. That makes the score 14 to zero for the Monarchs over our Preston Knights. Yeah, the Preston fans undaunted. They want to see uh, some offense here. The Knights have been competitive in their last two outings, but like this one, a little slow to get started uh, against North Marion, and that has carried over uh, a little unexpectedly to this game. Uh, talking with Coach John Tennant during the week, uh, he was he was very happy with the competitiveness of his team. He said, we just got to get it in gear a little quicker, a little sooner. And the Knights, uh, try as they may, have not been able to make that happen here this evening. A little windy up here on the mountaintop tonight as the fall breeze moves through Knights Stadium. As we look down over the hillside towards Camp Dawson, a beautiful, beautiful view from right here in our press box tonight. Monarchs ready to kick it off with 8.20 to go. Another short kick fielded by Preston. That was Hunter Lance on the return for the Knights. This ball up, good field position for Preston. The ball starts about 37. Yeah, yeah. As, as good as the Monarchs are, Monarchs are excuse me, uh, with the place kicking, uh, the kickoffs have been short here this evening. It's afforded Preston good field position, but they haven't been able to take advantage yet. All right. Nice hard count that time. Got him to jump. Officials are going to talk it over. Yeah, they're going to go with the encroachment. Just the fourth penalty, I think, on the evening for the Monarchs, but that's the second encroachment penalty that they've had and uh, something that Preston is doing um, up there along the line with the snap count is convincing them to go early. Zach Ripple split to the near side. Now we get a quick pitch as they try to get the big half back. A little room to run. Jesse Gribble running hard. Gribble, the ball here. And they're going to pick up a first down here with 8.01 remaining in the period. Ball sitting right at the midfield stripe. Good hard running by Gribble out to midfield there. Now the Knights can start going downhill if they can push it into Monarch territory here. Get a couple of good plays and sustain this drive. Griffle split to the near side. The give once again to Gribble. Gribble up carrying Monarch players for a couple extra yards. He moves the stack for about a total of five on the play. Nice hard running by Jesse Gribble. Big number 76 on the stop. And we're going to call him riding, Jesse riding. He's 305 pounds for the Monarchs tonight. That's a big boy. Once again, Thomas on the keeper, and they st stuffed that for a loss. 
Good job by the uh, defensive end. He just came up field and did not gr give any ground. He was looking for Thomas. And once he drew a bead, he was pretty quick about getting to him. A loss of four on the play will bring up a third and nine. So Preston, again, needing a big play here just over midfield. Looks to swing the ball out. Thomas on the run. Tried to get the ball downfield. That pass was intended for Riffle and a little wide on that throw. He was on the run. That brings up fourth down once again. Can't seem to get a sustained drive moving here. So they're going to have to make some changes here at halftime. Yeah, the big thing is consistency. That's, that's where we're at. The Knights have just got to become more consistent offensively. Punt's going to, they're going to let that punt roll. Good, good punt down to the 10-yard line where it will be down by the Knights. And Monarchs will start their drive on the 10-yard line. Monarchs leading 14-0 with 6-11 remaining in the first half of action here at Knights Stadium. We welcome you to our broadcast tonight. First, first one of the season for us, Terry. Yeah, we got to get the bugs worked out a little bit, don't we? And nice to be back uh, on the hilltop here. Knights have a three-game homestand. They play next week and then Buckwheat Festival weekend right here at home. Which is good for those who like football because that's an open week for the Mountaineers. Burton is a, a very good runner. I mean, he's very patient in the hole. He keeps moving his feet, and he looks for the next location. Once again, Burton to the outside. And we got some more laundry on the field as he was spinning and uh, – Driving forward there and tackled along the near sideline. <coughs> I, think, I think they're going to get him with a block in the back. It's going to move him back 15 or half the distance. Ten-yard penalty. So that's a second down and five to go now for the Monarchs. Starting the ball carry. Burton once again the ball carrier picks up uh, another first down. For the Monarchs. Third and a long four here. Preston wants to keep them in this end. Well, they're running, running behind that big number 79, but we, we show him a 70, his number 79 on the field. I think it's number 77, Jesse Redding. He's 305 pounds, and he's just pounding them. The Knights right now. Your car could run out of gas just getting around a mountain that big. I'll try to get into the booth here, see if we can get some different numbers on a couple of these players at halftime. Media generally was uh, comparing notes before the game, and uh, we were all perplexed. I think that's the way the uh, John Marshall staff likes it. Burton 
Give to the fullback. He's going to gain about four yards. Stenson on the tackle. And Wiles. There's good hit on the sidelines, but he picks up another big chunk of yardage. Out yep. over midfield, the Monarchs, they're getting it rolling again here, Terry. They're trying to put another score on the board before halftime. That's Burton. He's just hes very patient, and he's got some speed to the outside. Knight's got to contain him. A little more laundry on the field. Uh, legal procedure call against the Monarchs. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. 3.36 remaining. They were, they're going to look at, uh, once again, they're going to look for big number 16 downfield. That's, that's been their go-to guy, Babzik. Babzik is, uh, he's a... Six foot, 185 pound tight end. And they'll float him out and look for him. And there he is. And he's going to get the first down. They just cannot contain him. Now more laundry down on the far sidelines. Uh, they got him for, got Preston on a late hit out of bounds. Yeah, we'll see what the mark off is here, but it's not good for the Knights. Another 15 That's a yards one. tacked on. Late hit on Babizic. What they're doing is they're just floating three deep, one, two downfield deep on, on long outs, and then they bring Babizic out on a delay and just float him out into the flat area, clear it out and give him the ball, let him go, he's a big boy. And with that penalty, the Knights are gonna take a timeout with just over three minutes remaining here in the first half of tonight's home opener. They're gonna talk things over, try to come up with a plan here to uh, limit the mistakes, but more importantly, stop the Monarchs from putting any more points on the board here. John Marshall's got to be pretty happy with the effort. A uh, long road trip to get down here, place they've never been before, playing on real grass, which it sounds funny, but it's unusual for them. Uh, so it's a, a little bit of an uncertain surface, and you're a running team, and you come out here and put, uh, put 14 points up and, more importantly, hold the Knights to zero. Uh, so far here in this first half, uh, they've done a pretty workmanlike job for an 0-2 squad. Uh, they're not throwing much trickery at uh, Preston. They just line up and pound the ball right up at them, and then when they get in a little bit of trouble, they look for their tight end downfield. So... You know, adjustments are going to have to be made by the Knights. Here we go. Got their little scat back in there this time. That looks like uh, Michael Mason came into the ball game. He's a little quicker. A little quicker than Burton. Tackled just outside the 24. Uh, that's going to be a pickup of about two. Give it to the fullback. 
and he's going to get about two yards, and they drag him back. Big third down here for Preston Terry. Third and a long five. Nearly six yards to get uh, the first down. But again, for John Marshall, it's definitely two down territory from what they've done so far tonight. Oh, big opener on that right side. Uh, another flag on the play. I couldn't see exactly what happened over there, but I'm going to call legal procedure on the Monarchs. A couple of times, John Marshall has shot themselves in the foot, and that mistake right there, big for Preston. I don't make it third and almost 11. And John Marshall, John Marshall. will take a timeout. Looked like they didn't have their big secret weapon on the field. Big number 16 was standing over on the sidelines, and I think they finally decided. He's that. too big to be a secret. I know. He's, he's not a secret. I think they decided we better get him back in here. He's more like the Moab. 185 pounds. He's he's in there blowing up in. our defensive line tonight. No, yeah. big number 69 is doing all that on his own, or 79. Jesse riding. He's just he's killing the our tackles tonight, our defensive tackles. Number 53, Blaine Fear, and uh, 54, Ryan Brady's had their hands full all night long with, with that young man. And here's the problem. Preston, short roster, not that deep. You, you guys can get weary, and there's not a lot of backup there. Comes a blitz. They have a man wide open. A good pass downfield. Quick hitter to number 30. And that was Zach Bischoff just on a quick crossing route, and they gave him a lot of cushion. Good pitch and throw. Picks up that first down. First and goal with 126 remaining in the first half. Knights collapse to the ball. Nice job defensively, but still a gain of three. They bring Burton back into the ball game, but they give the, to the fullback. Fullback still powers his way right up the middle, and he's down to at least the, uh, looks like the one-yard line with 40 seconds remaining in the, Half. Clock still running. Knights need to dig in right now and stop this play. <laughs> Got to get down and get into it. Give to the fullback, and it's a touchdown. Powered his way in there in the bottom of the stack. Just 22 seconds remaining here in quarter number two. And John Marshall racks up their 20th point. Whistle before the kick. 
offsides against the Knights. Somebody jumped the gun there. Well, tomorrow we get to go to Morgantown to watch the Mountaineers take on North Carolina State. Hoping it's a little better game than we saw last week out of the Mountaineers. I think Coach Neil Brown will make some changes. It'll oh, there's no doubt uh, the Mountaineers still trying to find their identity and find their footing. Uh, and the cupboard's a little bare in Morgantown here uh, for Coach Brown in his first year. Be that as it may, it'll be an exciting, uh, hard-fought contest, fun to watch. Kick is up and good for the extra point. So the Monarchs trot off the, the sidelines with a 21 the nothing lead over the Preston Knights with 22 seconds remaining. And with that uh, score, they have tripled their offensive output for either of the first two games of the season. So whatever plan they uh, concocted on the long bus ride down here, <laughs> it's working. Yeah, it's working. I, and, and I think it's had more to do than just uh, switch some jerseys around to try and confuse us. Um, the Monarchs have just played good, hard-nosed football here in Kingwood uh, so far tonight. But it's only half number one. And Preston can make some adjustments at halftime. And if they do come out here with uh, renewed effort, um, get a couple big plays defensively. And uh, I'm going to say we need at least one turnover, one takeaway. Well, the Monarchs are big up front, and, uh, you know, they go 305, 255, 250, 260. That's a big front line for uh, the Knights to go up against. Um, but this is triple-A ball. They should be able to do that. Nineteen point eight seconds. We'll see what the Knights. Uh, they're going to play center field on them back here. They're going to drop everybody deep because they they know they're going to throw long. They split two to the near side, and I believe they'll probably bring some pressure right up the middle. Grib looks downfield. He throws just way overthrows his intended target. Colton Rosenberger. Double coverage for Rosenberger down there, but uh, he kind of pulled up there, got some space, but just not able to get uh, hooked up. Swing pass was attempted out to the fullback. Um, Townsend, a little strong, he couldn't handle the pass. Third and 10 for Preston here. Thomas flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to be sacked. And that's going to end the first half of play. Now we come to the end of the first half, and we take a break here for these messages from the folks that bring you Preston Knight Varsity Football this season here on the mountaintop in Kingwood. And then we'll be back with halftime uh, festivities, the uh, fabled Knight Marching Band, 
and uh, get set for second half action. So go grab your snacks, get back to the easy chair. We'll be back right after this. Recent studies have shown that people who complete a cardiac rehabilitation program can increase their life expectancy by up to five years. Preston Memorial Hospital's cardiac rehab team helps you begin and maintain a treatment plan that works for you. They offer education and support to make healthy lifestyle changes that fit your needs. We're here to help you live longer and enjoy life. Most insurance plans are accepted. Please contact your doctor or our cardiac rehab center at 304-329-3429. From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project, and they're committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the new year with us by saving big on our double-sided made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. Come, Come experience, experience the Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. We also have adjustable beds. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family. Brown's Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Brown's Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Brown's Mill Grocery. Brown's Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Brown's Mill Grocery. One, hut two, hut three. Fuck! What do you think you're doing? I'm just trying to teach these ladies how to play football. You leave those girls alone and get back to work. But they want to play. Hi, Buck. You better get in there and get my winter treads on and check my brakes and change the oil. We have to get to the Preston High football game, you fool. Rainbow Tire, the tire lady takes care of me.
From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project and are committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. The Wound Care Center at Preston Memorial Hospital is dedicated to helping you heal as quickly as possible. We offer a wide range of diagnostic services and therapies to help not only heal your wounds, but to help prevent further wound problems. Our compassionate team will evaluate your case and work to educate you on why you have a non-healing wound, as well as create a treatment plan, sometimes as often as your first visit. To begin your healing journey, call our Wound Healing Center today. To schedule an appointment at 304-329-3348. Hut one, hut two, hut three. Fuck! What do you think you're doing? I'm just trying to teach these ladies how to play football. You leave those girls alone and get back to work. But they want to play. Hi, Buck. You better get in there and get my winter treads on and check my brakes and change the oil. We have to get to the Preston High football game, you fool. Rainbow tire. The tire lady takes care of me. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family. Brown's Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Brown's Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Brown's Mill Grocery. Brown's Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Brown's Mill Grocery. Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the new year with us by saving big on our double-sided Made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. Come, Come experience, experience the Delano's difference. difference. The Delano is different. The Delano is different. We also have adjustable beds. A full harvest moon riding over the clouds above the Cheat uh, Canyon, Terry, as we yeah. return to Kingwood. Take a good look, folks, because we don't get another one of those till 2049. <laughs> There's your science fact for the evening. Hey, there we go. Well, I can tell you one science fact. Uh, the uh, Monarchs come in here tonight ready to play, and they've got our Knights in a big hole at the score of 21-0. to zero. Well, they do, Terry, and, uh, you know, it, it's a situation born of desperation for them and for the Knights. Um, you know, what can you say? The effort there, but, but sort of not there. They're a little flatter than I thought they would come out. Uh, I thought they would be ready to really take advantage of an 0-2 team on the road. But John Marshall, not an untalented group here, and they've got that big front line, and I think it's giving uh, giving our guys a little bit of uh, trouble. Yeah, I think it's giving our, our uh, defensive line a lot of trouble, and I think some adjustments have to be made. I agree with my brother, who happens to be here with me tonight from Akron. He's in here, uh, Mr. John Cochran, an, an ex-alumnus of Valley High School from way back when. Yeah, now we're going back in the day. Now we're going back in the day. And he can remember the times that he played big teams like Beale, Maryland, and University High and when they were a single-A school. And they went up against these larger linemen and uh, it, it's a matter of the scheme that you run and uh, how you how you make changes at halftime well john marshall returning to the sideline the knights taking their time they have not exited the locker room yet we expect them back momentarily to the field but uh 
I'm sure they are putting in a little extra <laughs> uh, as we see just the beginning of the coaching staff and players coming down to the field now. But the Knights uh, putting in some extra time, making some adjustments, hopefully, to get this home opener back on track. Uh, 21 points, triple the output that John Marshall has, uh, uh, has put up in their first two contests, scoring seven against Weir um, and seven against University High in their opener. And uh, for them to come on the road down here for the first time ever to Kingwood and put 21 points on the board, I, I would think they'd have to be fairly ecstatic in the locker room at halftime. Uh, hopefully they overlook some adjustments and we take advantage. Well, the Knights down on the field right now um, in their black uniforms, gray helmets, white numerals, and they will warm up and try to uh, come up with a way to uh, offset the size of that offensive line that, that uh, the Monarchs are putting up against them. That big center of theirs, 305 pounds, he's just owning the linebackers that are right in front of him tonight and opening up some big holes for those running backs to get through. They like that little quick dive play and then they come right back with a little counter off tackle. And he seems to be having his way with the Preston linemen so far. So we'll see what kind of changes they make at halftime. And again, a nice crowd out here tonight uh, in support of both of these teams. Uh, most 0-2 teams don't get the kind of uh, travel that uh, John Marshall's getting here. They've got a good crowd of fans out here. They're excited tonight. The Knights have packed the stands down on the other end as we take a look. And uh, nobody's leaving. Nobody's going anywhere. Uh, they're excited to see Preston football get rolling here in 2019. Off to a great start uh, on the road. Uh, dropped one. Won one and came in here with a with high hopes and still a half of football yet to be played. They just need to get out here and uh, get it done. Captains will be going to uh, center field here in a second. To, uh, for second half instructions from the officials. Whole second half to play. A lot of time. We got to get the. Uh, we got to get a stop, and I believe the Monarchs will have the ball, and we'll get first possession here in the third quarter. Yeah, the worst part of that late uh, first half score by the Monarchs is we got to give them the ball right back, and uh, for Preston, that's. Uh, that's a whole set of problems that they don't want to uh, to have to encounter here. They need to get a stop, need to get a turnover here early, actually, if we can. So the ceremonial meeting at uh, center field done now and the Knights will get ready to kick this one away to uh, start quarter number three. Kicking off for the Preston Knights here to begin the second half. Is number 11, Trevor Thomas. Also the quarterback for the Preston Knights. Now he moves it to the uh, far hash, almost like they're 
contemplating an onside kick here. Well, you never know. Uh, might be some trickeration up the sleeve of Coach John Tennant here to try and uh, turn the tide, give his team a little boost. And he kicks it a little deeper. And a quick stop on that run back. He gains about 10, 15 yards on the return. That'll set the Monarchs up with a uh, first and 10. Right or at the 32-yard uh, line. Where they, well, they'll start first and 10. All right, let's see what kind of defensive changes the Knights have made here going into the third quarter. Looks like we've put five down, and they're looking to throw first shot downfield. They got a man wide open. There he is. Yo, got that. the ball deep to number 30, Zach Bischoff, who had floated out. And they saw just exactly what they wanted to see as the Knights loaded up the box and they just let it go downfield. One on one, picked up big yardage. Now back to the tried and true, let's pound it. Good play that time by Stenson. Looks like they've decided they're going to double team the center, bring some more players in at him. But that opens up the hole right up the center, number 27, Alex Burton. Burton in the ball there. This is stopped made by Bischoff. That'll bring up third down. Third down. Long three yards to go. Out of that eye. Give to the fullback. And he's going to be close, but I believe he's going to be short. Depends on the spot. That should and be about a fourth and one. Yep. They gave it to him. First down. Wow. Look closer than that. They haven't moved the chains yet. Now they're moving them up. Give the ball to Burton. Burton with a quick burst of speed. And he's going to pick up another first down for the Monarchs. Just running right off tackle, just uh, weaving his way through the Preston Knights. Brown Apple brings him to the line. He's got two receivers split to the near side. Quick give to the fullback. Stacked up right the line of scrimmage, but he keeps his legs driving and uh, picks up five yards on that play. Stevie just wouldn't give up. No, impressive running uh, all night long here uh, by the backfield for uh, John Marshall. They just uh, keep driving, keep driving. Uh, well-conditioned, well-trained. Um, they've got some experience, too. They've got a lot of juniors and seniors on this squad. Um, they've got a ton of underclassmen in waiting. And that's part of the difference. You know, the Knights with a 39-40 man roster have a hard time competing. Short gain on the play. 
against these teams that can bring uh, two bus loads if they wanted to. Burton right up the center again. Only picked up about a half a yard. Good job by the linebackers to make the stop for the Knights and fill the hole. Third down, big play as they're deep in Knight territory once again. Give to the fullback, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he's going to pick up the first down. And it's going to be fourth down and a long two. No doubt in my mind they will go for this. Knights have to bowl their necks and get some steel in their spines right here, Terry. This would be a huge stop and a big lift for the team if they could get this ball back right here. Quarterback rolling out. He looks down into the end zone. He's going to have to throw it away. So the Knights hold. Big play by the Preston Knight defense. Odd choice of play by John Marshall yes. right there. I know they're leading by uh, three scores. But uh, fourth and two, and you're knocking on the door, and what got you there was your big horses, and you don't run them. I, I'm a little curious about that, but they wanted to try something different. Didn't work out for them. That's good for the Knights. Preston holds right at the goal line. Nice stand, and now they've got to get some offense going here. Sustain a drive, first of all. Get up away from this end zone and get this ball moving. Okay, receiver split to the near side. Gribble goes in motion. And they're going to run the quarterback, Trevor Thomas, around the outside. He's going to pick up about six or seven yards on that carry. Good design quarterback run that time as they uh, they got some extra people out on the edge. Nice little misdirection with Gribble, and uh, then uh, he set sail and able to create some space for himself over there along the sidelines before he was brought down. Gain of five on the play. Second and five now for the Knights. On a jet sweep, they give it to the fullback. Fullback pounds it up inside. Oh, and I believe he's going to pick up a first down for the Knights. Yes, he does. Good job on that jet sweep. That was Townsend, Jeffrey Townsend. Finally, the Knights get a little life going here. Two good runs. Moves the ball out of the shadow of their own end zone. Exactly what they needed to do to get a drive started here, Terry. Just not, uh, just not make any mistakes down deep here, and just keep this ball moving forward. Right into the teeth of the John Marshall defensive line. Yeah, Gribble had nowhere to go. Big number seventy-six was just swallowed him up. Closed that. Looked like he had a hold there for just a second, but it closed quickly. They split number 82 to the near side, along with, uh, and they put Rosenberger in motion. They give him the ball on the sweep. And now we get a... Uh, Flag. Wait for the call. They picked up maybe three yards on that carry, but I think it's coming back. Personal foul. Against the Knights holding, I believe. Oh, 
So that's going to hurt Preston. Take him back 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Somehow the Knights receivers have got to find a way to get themselves open and give give Trevor Thomas a, uh, something to some way to get the ball downfield. Now they, he's going to have to run the ball. And finally hits Rosenberger. Rosenberger makes a nice grab right on the sidelines, and they're going to give him the catch. That maybe brings up a third down and uh, third down. 10 yards to go for a first down for the Preston Knights. Time running out here in the third period. Only 5.44 remaining. Yeah, this third period has flown by. He throws downfield. He's got a man open. There's Rosenberger. Rosenberger breaks one tackle, cuts it inside. And a big play from Thomas to Rosenberger. And that brings some life into the Preston crowd. That was a nice play, a nice throw, pitch and catch by uh, Trevor Thomas to Rosenberger. Rosenberger did a little stutter step and got himself open, and and Trevor Thomas saw him and just lofted it downfield. Nice pickup. Now they're in John Marshall territory. See if they can keep this drive going. Give to the uh, fullback, and he went nowhere. Townsend just once again swallowed up by that big defensive line. Well, you got to keep them honest. You got to you got to run into the middle there once in a while uh, in order to have anything on the edge to go to. But uh, you would hope that you could develop a blocking scheme that would give you at least a little crease there to aim for. And so far, the Knights have just been shut down in the middle there, yeah, trying to run the ball. That was. Colby Cubic, he's 260 pounds and he can move. Thomas looks downfield, almost hits Rosenberger again. I believe he had a man deep that time, but he did not, he couldn't get squared up to throw the ball long. Um, if he could have looked downfield a little farther, he had uh, Brendan open. Not a lot of time there for him to make decisions. This uh, good pursuit from the backside by the Monarchs. Uh, coming around on that play. Brings up a big third and 12 for Preston. Rosenberger in the slot this time. And he's trying to find him. Thomas looking downfield and a catch made right on the sidelines and they're going to give him the catch. Good play once again by Rosenberger. Kept his feet in bounce and that's going to move the chains. All right, big first down for the Knights. This is the best drive the Knights have had all evening and it's been mainly the work of uh, Trevor Thomas and uh, Mr. Rosenberger. They have found a connection. Rosenberger in motion. They're going to give it to him on a jet sweep. He looks for a hole. Nothing there. He reverses field. Comes back the other way. I don't know if he's going to break containment. He does not. They swarm him and bring him to the ground. And now a flag goes high in the air. I, I'm not sure what happened at that point. Personal foul. 
against John Marshall. And that's a big save for Preston's drive right there. I don't know if that'll be an automatic first down or not. We've got to see what the penalty is and what the markoff is. But it's going to be darn close. 15-yard personal foul. It's going to give the Knights That'll do it. a first down. At about the 22-yard line. Well, sometimes you need a little help keeping that drive alive, and John Marshall steps in and provides it right there. And, again, these are the things that they've been battling all, all throughout the first two games of the season that have, uh, that have hampered them. Oh, he had a man downfield, and it was too high, overthrown. His intended target was uh, trying to catch Lewis out in the flat. Rosenberger back in the game quickly. Brings up uh, second down, about two to three yards to go for first down. They faked the ball to Gribble now. Oh, big sack. They just took a big loss. Big loss on that play. Knights really shot themselves in the foot with that, the execution. Um, was there initially, but then as the play broke down, it just turned into panic. Ran right into the defender that time and just had nowhere to go. Should have threw the ball away. That came at the 324 mark here in the third period. And that causes uh, John Tennant to take a timeout. Um, and he really, really needs to take that timeout right now and kind of collect, uh, collectively sort of calm these guys down a little bit and try to get them back on track. The Knights had a good drive going. Yes, it was aided by a big personal foul by John Marshall, but, um, you know, they were in a good position uh, at the 22-yard line, and this thing has blown up into a third and 18. Well, it's going to take a, a huge play like they got from Mr. Rosenberger the last time to get this first down, keep this drive alive. But Trevor Thomas has been running for his life here in the last couple plays, so we'll see what happens. They keep two guys in, and now they throw deep. Rosenberger's got his man beat. Oh, and drops it at the three-yard line. And now we have a flag down. Personal foul against the Knights. Personal foul. And against John Marshall. Not real sure what they caught unless it was a chop block. Probably had one guy engaged in high and the other guy went low. Is normally what happens right there on the. John Marshall is going to decline the penalty and bring up the fourth and 18. Yeah. Smart play by them. And Preston's going to bring the punter. See if they can pin this one back or 
convince the Monarchs to make a handling mistake with the ball. Fair catch called and nice job by Monarch to down the ball about the nine yard line looks to me. Right at the 11 I guess. First and 10 as John Marshall takes over. And the wind comes in and wreaks havoc in the booth. You're on. All right, Preston now. Facing a uh, determined John Marshall squad. And now we're going to see a timeout. Timeout in the action with uh, both squads uh, headed to the sideline here. He's on four. Not sure what prompted the timeout, but uh, both teams brief huddles on the side, and now, uh, well, the Knights started back out, and now uh, they're coming back to the sideline once again. Tell him to try receiver on channel four. Danny's here. Not real sure what's happening. No, this is uh, an extended timeout here. I think they're the problems with the clock. Officials thing. huddled over the ball, and evidently there's a clock issue. Because it's reset uh, to they, 25 minutes. Yeah, they have, they have not been able to correct it here. Sent both teams to the sidelines. They started back out at one point, and now uh, they've stopped again. I don't know if the... Uh, If the big clock, now they've reset it to three, and uh, I have the time at 312. But they may reset it to three and uh, and go from there. First and 10 for the Monarchs. And we're finally set to go. No gain on the play as they stop Burton for the first time really tonight. Yeah, he uh, normally falls forward for at least a couple uh, yeah. if he's uh, if he's tripped even in the backfield. Quarterback on a keeper around the side. And he's almost, I'd say he will pick up the first down. Fran Apple just uh, got outside and just took off. He sold that pretty well, and he's uh, fairly fleet-footed. Uh, I'd say uh, if he didn't want to play quarterback, he could be a running back for the Monarchs.
Third and about three as they come over the ball. That brings up fourth down, and looks like they're going to send out the punt team. So Preston's going to get another chance here with a minute and 58 seconds remaining in the third. Time clock is running. About a minute 50, somewhere in there. And they're going to hold the clock until the last second before they kick it. Oh, and they fake it. And here he comes up the sidelines. He picks up the first down. Just not prepared. Yeah, the Knights were not ready mentally for that uh, in any way, shape, or form. And John Marshall. We do have a flag. That would be the only thing that might help the Knights out. Well, if there was a procedure penalty... No, nope, they didn't Preston. throw that early, nope. and I think that was just a foul uh, out of frustration. Yep, probably late hit on the out of bounds line. So that gives them another ten minutes. They can run out the end of the quarter. That time, good play, but he gets away. They had him bottled up, and now they're going to force him out of bounds on this near sidelines. Good tackle over there by the Knights. But all that was uh, all that was taken care of by number 85 of the Knights. He forced that. Good job by uh, Jacob Gregg that time. So he got in the backfield and turned him around. And that gave the rest of the Knights an opportunity to get in and make that play. Loss of nine on the play, Terry. Brings up a second and 19. Now they look downfield. They got a man wide open. A nice pitch, catch. And he's going to pick up another first down. Just wide open. Well, the Monarchs have been able to get big plays when they've needed them. The Knights have not, and one of the big differences here in this second half are a couple of big plays by John Marshall that have gotten them out of big holes. The fake punt, and uh, now this pass into Knight territory yeah. for a big first down. That was Harry Galloway for the Monarchs. Good job that time. Good stick on this near sideline by number 22 from Preston. That was Anthony Romage. They're going to let the clock run out here in the third period, and uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and be right back for the final period here at Preston Knight Stadium with our Knights down by a score of 21 to zero to the Monarchs. Preston Memorial Hospital welcomes Dr. Michael Forkrin to our team. Dr. Forkrin is a general surgery specialist that graduated with honors from West Virginia University School of Medicine. Having more than eight years of diverse experience, Dr. Forkrin performs advanced laparoscopic procedures of the abdomen, including gallbladder, stomach, bowel, colon, liver, and pancreas. Dr. Forkrin also performs endoscopies in our state-of-the-art endoscopy suite. Appointments are available now by calling 304-329-4701. 
Browns Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Browns Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Browns Mill Grocery. Browns Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Browns Mill Grocery. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family. Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the new year with us by saving big on our double-sided Made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. Come, Come experience, experience the Delano's difference. difference. The Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. We also have adjustable beds. One, hut two, hut three. Fuck! What do you think you're doing? I'm just trying to teach these ladies how to play football. You leave those girls alone and get back to work. But they want to play. Bye, Buck. You better get in there and get my winter treads on and check my brakes and change the oil. We have to get to the Preston High football game, you fool. Rainbow Tire, the tire lady takes care of me. From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project, and they're committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. All right, we're back for the final quarter here at uh, Preston Knight Stadium. Monarchs leading by a score of 21 to zero. And for John Marshall, that third quarter uh, didn't add any points to the total, but they were dominant and uh, they were tricky. Yep. And they got out of a couple of deep holes that would have afforded Preston opportunities to get drives started maybe uh, in a position where they could have maybe carried something out and, and got to a score, but uh, not to be. All right, the Monarchs uh, now. Up over the ball, and then they take the timeout. So, John Marshall. With 10 minutes, 55 seconds remaining. They want to talk things over. The Knights will uh, will let them and take the opportunity to uh, do a little plotting and planning on the near side here. This has certainly not gone the way Preston wanted the home opener to go here. Uh, John Marshall coming in here at 0-2, Terry, and you know when a team has their backs against a record like that, their backs are against a wall and they become desperate, and a desperate team goes one of two ways. John Marshall has seized the moment. They have uh, taken advantage of every miscue the Knights have made and really um, come in here and run their offense the way they want to. And they've been able to uh, be productive with it. 
And the quarterback's just going to run it for the first down. Just weaving his way through traffic. He just gets outside and no containment. He picks up the first down. So that's going to run the clock down. Quick give to the uh, fullback. And they're just running clock right now, Steve. Well, yeah, you know, at this point, they just want to get to the bus, get this over with, head back to the panhandle uh, with a win um, under their belts and, uh, and a pretty good feeling uh, for the first time this season about their performance. Knights are not laying down by any means, but uh, I think uh, the defense has been out on the field long enough that they're getting maybe just a little bit gassed here. Mm -hmm. I would look for John Marshall to try and take advantage of that with uh, maybe a shot downfield. But uh, as long as that clock keeps turning and they can keep uh, coming up with first downs, Maybe not. Big third and five here. Oh, and we're going to see a flag, and that's going to give him a first down. Yep, that was all face mask. Yep, that, uh, that went bad in a hurry. Yeah. Yep. Not intentional, but the young man just reached out there trying to get a hold of something and get a, a stop behind the lines. And uh, the something he got a hold of is about the worst thing you can do. Uh, that, that was dangerous because he really got, he got a hold of that face mask and drug him around. <laughs> that, uh, that's a personal foul. That's a 15-yard penalty. Nine twenty three remaining. Knights in danger of losing their home opener. As John Marshall's Doing everything they can to try to get in the end zone one more time, but I see some flags. That's probably going to – that's a hold, holding call against uh, John Marshall, which will back him up 15 yards. Stops the clock with 9.09 remaining. And uh, they were just inside the 10-yard line. That's going to knock them back. Almost to the 15. <laughs> Throws a quick slant, and he's going to run it into the end zone. That's, whoa, and we get a flag right at the end. Of the run, that was a perfectly designed play. They just hit him with a quick opener to the outside, and he ran quickly to the end zone. Now we'll see what the call is. I believe we might get a hold on John Marshall on their on their uh, wide receiver. Well, it looks like the ball's coming back. Holding on the monarch. Yep. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Yeah. That's and a, that negates a very pretty play. Yeah, that too, was a really too bad good for the design. young man there. Uh, because that was a nice little combination. And John Marshall, more of a ground team. The wide receivers don't get too much opportunity uh, in that regard most of the time. Cranapple's a, a good quarterback, though. He, he throws, he spins a nice ball right down the middle. Touchdown. 
right in the open, just ran a post. Now another flag comes out. Yeah, that's again, that's going to be the frustration. I think they're going to get him for uh, probably uh, a little over, over zesty. A little overzealous. Play, overzealous play yeah. in the uh, zesty. <laughs> Uh, we got offsetting penalties, personal foul against the Knights. And when we come out and the kicker has been perfect thus far on the evening. And that makes it John Marshall 28, Preston Zip. And that goose egg just keeps getting bigger on the board there for the Knights. Uh, not, not what these fans wanted to see, not certainly what this team wanted to come out here and produce offensively on, on, in the first home game. And with that score, the uh, the crowd will thin just a little bit. Uh, but uh, most of the night faithful hanging in here with us. And uh, Preston will come out here now, get set to take this ball. And again, try to show that they've got uh, some offensive wherewithal. John Marshall coming in here playing better than we expected on both sides of the ball. Uh, did not expect the offensive fireworks that they have been able to uh, muster here this evening. Ball brought out on the near side, out over the uh, 30, just over the 30 yard line. And Preston will start first and 10 from there. Knights out over the ball from the gun with two backs split. And tiptoeing down the near sideline. All the way to the 49 yard line. Preston advancing to midfield. Trying to get something going here offensively. Long pass downfield taken in. Nice catch. for a big Preston first down. And that's gonna be the deepest foray the Knights have made into John Marshall territory here in the second half, all the way down to the 21 yard line.
Pocket collapsing, and uh, John Marshall with the big rush. And Rosenberger on the keeper will be brought down back out over the 25, back to the 28-yard line. And that's going to bring up second down for Preston. Single back set, looking deep. Now pursued, trying to turn the corner, and Rosenberger will do that. Gets back near the line of scrimmage, and he'll be brought down there. Forced to keep the ball. That was a coverage uh, sack all the way, uh, and he made uh, a great effort to worm his way out of trouble there. Uh, turned that one to the uh, far side and uh, got back down over the 35 to the 34-yard line. And that will bring up third and about 20. And now the officials. Wave off a stop, and we've got a timeout in the action as the Knights will come to the near sideline with six minutes and eight seconds remaining on the big board. So Preston trailing by four scores here with six minutes to go. You know, they're just looking for some measure of, of respect here. Uh, they want to put something in the end zone, uh, give the fans a little something to cheer for. Um, and something to work off of going forward. But this has to be a big disappointment um, for the team in general uh, and particularly for, uh, uh, for the coaches who, uh, to a one, felt that the Knights had been uh, very competitive down at North Marion in the loss, had played well at Hampshire in getting the opening uh, victory, and uh, had been putting points on the board at a pretty good clip. Uh, the Knights not scoring here tonight is something of a, a stunner, a shocker. Uh, that they have not been able to get the ball in the end zone is, uh, is very, very unexpected. And not just due to the fact that John Marshall came in here um, with no wins. Rosenberger guns that one, and that'll be down inside the 20. Thomas with the pass, Rosenberger with the catch. And that'll bring up a fourth down. The Knights get a chunk back, but it, uh, it's only about half of what they need. Fourth and 10 now as Preston huddles, and the clock turns down to the five-and-a-half-minute mark. Two back set. And coming to the near side. Well, the Monarchs were going to get that ball back one way or another, and uh, the Knights turn it over as uh, the football got loose and uh, squirted out there down around the 21-yard line. So somewhere between the 21 and 22, John Marshall will take possession. It's 
So the Knights are turned away once again. Hopefully they, this, uh, this game gets this uh, out of their system. I know fans that we talked to on the way to the game here in downtown Kingwood and uh, uh, fans that I talked to earlier in the week, they were expecting some fireworks here uh, on the mountain uh, by the Knights in this home opener. Uh, they were anxious to come out here and uh, see this team that had uh, put up a one-and-one -one record on the road but had, uh, had scored uh, in the 30s uh, both times doing it. Um, to just come out here and, again, lay this goose egg on the board. Um, it, it, a little bit of a stunner for the home fans. Monarchs off tackle with that one and chugging forward uh, for about a yard and a half, two yards, I believe. We'll call it uh, the line to gain at the 25. Uh, it'll bring up a third and seven. Quick to the near sidelines. And again, John Marshall, they like to run that attack right into the short side. And uh, good effort there, but uh, taken down just after about a yard and a half, two yard gain. It'll bring up fourth down. So fourth and five. And hold your breath because. Uh, Last time they faced a fourth and five like this, they ran it. Yep, going to kick this ball away. Nice kick spiraling down at the 40-yard line. Taken there, and the Knights trying to get something going. Down the far sideline. Breaking through the defense, and Preston going to put a special team score on the board, Colton Rosenberger into the end zone there and something to celebrate for these Preston fans who have hung around as uh, with three minutes and 10 seconds on the fourth quarter clock, Colton puts the Knights on the board. Well, hold everything. Looking for the call on the flag here. It's going to set the Knights back, back over midfield, back over the 40-yard line. Let's see where they're going to put this. Official is marching it off. All right, down inside the 30, inside the 25, the 24-yard line is where they will spot the ball. All right, so fourth down in the Monarchs. 
boot this one out of there once again. Do the Knights have any magic? Coming to the near side, no quit for Preston. Not going to get to the end zone, but a nice run back nonetheless. And Preston well into John Marshall territory at the 32-yard line. It's where that ball will end up after the run back. Single back and looking for room to run. And here comes Thomas running to the near side. And down inside the 20. That'll be a first and 10 for Preston. And they're going to mark him out of bounds right along the 19-yard line so the Knights get into the red zone with about two minutes and 50 seconds. Incomplete pass. Brings up a second and 10 for the Knights. And Thomas from the shotgun. Again, they'll split uh, two receivers wide left, one to the right. And he's going to roll left, looking, looking, firing. And that's going to be... Incomplete, I believe, on the uh, far side. And on third down, the Knights turn the trick. Lewis unable to get the pass on second down over near the sidelines, comes back, redeems himself with a great catch and run into the end zone. And the Knights at the two minute, 34 second mark of the fourth period. Can finally hang six on the board. Long time coming, got to feel uh, the frustration for this team here tonight. But it also has to feel good to uh, get that goose egg off the board and to uh, come out here and, uh, and put some points up for these uh, fans who have stuck with them here tonight. Few people have, uh, have exited the mountaintop, but the core of the night fan base uh, still here. And the Knights are going to run it for two. Just short. And so they will remain a 28-6 deficit. And the Knights with uh, two and a half minutes now remaining as the uh, band cranks up. 
And uh, the night fans finally have something to uh, celebrate just a little bit uh, down along the way here. Hometown TV, pleased as always to bring you coverage of the Preston Knights uh, here on the mountaintop. We'll have all the home contests uh, for you here this season. Um, and hopefully the Knights will respond uh, when next we, uh, we come to the hilltop just a week from tonight. Preston starting a three-game homestand here this week that will culminate with a game during the Buckwheat Festival on Friday night. Attempt at the onside kick there. Unsuccessful. So it'll be first and ten for the Monarchs. First down for the Monarchs. Two and a half to go in this one. And look for them to uh, try and keep the clock running here and pound out a, a first down or two. Preston rising up defensively. Bischoff with a nice tackle for loss there. And uh, John Marshall has been tough to stop tonight on the ground. Bischoff with another tackle. And that'll bring up a third down for the Monarchs. Knights will stop the clock with 136 remaining now that they've got a third down uh, and long situation. It'll be third and 14 for John Marshall when we resume play here momentarily as uh, the Knights quickly back out over the ball and John Marshall breaks the huddle. Comes up to the line. We get everybody set. Quick opener. Over the right tackle there and out. Bursting out to midfield. This will bring up a fourth down for John Marshall, and we'll see if they uh, elect to punt this ball. Preston will send one man back deep. And... We're going to have a running into the kicker. 
as the flag flies right at the 40 yard line. Lewis picking up a short yardage on the return, but uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a moot point. Clock turning inside 30 seconds now. Pickup of about two makes it second down and eight. And that may be the final play of this one. Looks like it is as the uh, Knights are going to stay in the huddle. And uh, the official picks up the ball and the horn will sound. Here on the mountaintop tonight, not um, not the uh, effort that the Knights wanted to put forth and not the result that they expected as these two teams line up to shake hands. Uh, the Knights will uh, drop to one and two, and John Marshall moves up to one and two with their first victory of the season here as they come out on the road and uh, steal one away here in Kingwood, Preston. Unable to do anything uh, offensively till very, very late. Drops a 28 to six contest here in the home opener. But fans never say die. The Knights will be back uh, next week. Again, a 7 p.m. start. Hometown TV will be here. We hope you'll be here. Get out, get in the seats, and uh, support these young men. And uh, they'll uh, work hard this week to make the necessary corrections and uh, come back out here and give you hopefully a uh, better showing than the one we got tonight here. I don't know if it was the harvest moon effect or what, but uh, Preston, again, uh, a 28-6 loss to the John Marshall Monarchs, and uh, we bid them adieu. Wish them well, and uh, we'll get out of here for now. But we will see you around town, around Preston County, and back here on the mountaintop in one week for more Prestonite varsity football. Until then, good night.